Okay, so here we are back again, and I'm going to connect to the server to gain access to the machine that we're building on via Telnet. So I log in as root, and the first thing I'm going to do is to mount or remount the partition, which is dev hda7 into LFS. Then I'll recall the troot command. So I'm back in troot, and then finally I've got to remember to mount the proc file system. Um, right, I should probably check to see what command is used to do this. There it is there. Okay, all right, it's simple enough. I didn't know if it was something fancy, so I'll just copy and paste it in there, and that's done. Uh, it's probably not being shown at the moment because the configuration is still not complete. So let's go back to here and finish setting up some system boot scripts. So it mentions there how all this works and the first script we've got is the set clock script so basically the UTC one means that the time is stored on the hardware in GMT time or UTC if you're sharing it with Windows or DOS then you'd want to set that to zero to say that it's stored in local time but generally it's better to have it stored as UTC or GMT as it's otherwise known Do I need load the key script? If you decide to compile your key mac directly into the kernel back, you need to strip you need to speak. I don't need to lose the load. Right, so we do need load key script because we're loading it each time, so we won't remove that script. Um, otherwise, you could remove it if you had built it into the kernel. This is klog D. There's something there about modifying how often it timestamps or writes to the logs, so I'll leave that as it is as well. Um, part of the local net script is setting up the system's host name. This needs to be configured in the etc sysconfig network. So let's do that. I'm going to call this machine lfs-4.0. Now I'm going to do the etc host file, and there's two files given, one for with and one without a network adapter. So because I'll be using a network adapter, I'm going to copy the second one. And I'm going to edit that now as well to fill in the gaps. So the top one doesn't need to be changed this one here does need to be changed so the IP address going to be using is the one I'm connecting with now and the first part here is the fully qualified domain name so that's the host name separated by a domain so I've got mynet.org And then just the value of host name by itself, so that's LFS 4.0. And that should be sufficient. Configuring the network script, so we've got to 
if you want a network, you may need to set up a default gateway. This is done by adding proper values to the config by running the following. So I'll have to edit that because that gateway is incorrect for me. And then it's got some information about creating a configuration for the actual network card itself. Again, that needs modifying. So I'll just copy that in. And now I'm going to edit this file to adjust those values. Um, okay, so it's overwritten. In fact, it's overwritten two things there by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, this should come second. This is to append and this is to overwrite. So what's happened is I've created that file. Uh, sorry, no, beg your pardon. Uh, that's to etc network. Let's just check that because we did write something to it before and we've got to modify it anyway. Yeah, the LFS name. So I've just got to alter the gateway to be zero one for me and obviously change your own if you're doing this. So zero one is my gateway. And then I want to edit the actual IF config file change the IP address to 0 0.37 so that's the IP address of this machine and the broadcast will be on the 192.168.0 subnet so I'll save that and that should be all that's needed um, I think that's all that's required there. So now we're going on to making the system bootable. So first thing we've not got to do is create an FS tab file. So I'll copy that in and edit that. So the first line is for the root partition, so that's got to be HDA7. Oops. HDA7. The file system type, I imagine, is still going to be EXT2. And leave everything else as it is. The swap partition, I think, was HDA3. Let me check that. Let's go here and do fdisk myself slash dev slash hda. Okay, so it looks like I'm not going to be able to view that. Okay. Uh, Right, okay, this user hasn't got access to the super user, so that's why that's not working. Um, oh, and I'm on the wrong machine anyway, aren't I? So I've got to go SSH P Pro 200. Then Telnet. Um... One nine two one six eight zero thirty seven. I'm going to root and then f disk myself slash dev slash hda. Yeah, it's not going to show us it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the oh, in fact, let's do df minus h. That'll tell us, uh, sorry, no cat proc swaps. Yep, hda3 is currently set, so that's correct. So let's change that to three. Everything else can stay the same. Got the proc to load there. It says there are other lines you may want to consider when adding, add, adding to your FS tab file. One example is the line which you must have if you're using dev PTS. So let's copy that in there. And if you're 
if you intend to use USB devices as well. So I will be setting up the kernel to use USB because this machine has got USB 1.0 um, ports on it. So that should be okay. And we'll have to monitor at the boot up to see if there's any issues with those settings.